I've heard this a ton, even now, which is arguably ironic to me, uh, but what is it that I always hear? You can't run databases on Kubernetes. Kubernetes is for ephemeral workloads, not for workloads with persistent data. And that is absolutely incorrect. It is furthest thing from the truth. There are two primary methods, I would say. The first, well, I guess technically three. The first, you can deploy with a deployment kind or object, but I would very, very much prefer and recommend a stateful set, which is the second kind. So you can utilize a stateful set as well. The third, which is what I'm going to show you in this video, is you can actually deploy like a MySQL pod, for example, on Kubernetes as a stateful set and have the environment variables, the connection strings point to an external database. So let's go ahead and see how to do that in GKE. All right, so first things first, I have my cluster here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna to want to connect to this. I'm gonna click this button here in just a second. But before that, let's go ahead and head over to the database. So I have a MySQL instance running and sorry about the screen here. Uh, whenever I go full, this little silly thing won't go away. So we're just gonna minimize it here really quick. So within here, I can go to SQL. Right. And you see here I have one instance. You could also create an instance if you already don't already have one. And we could see some traffic coming in here from when I was playing around with this before. So the primary things that you're going to need, number one, the connection name. Okay. Number two, you're going to create a user. You can use the root user as well if you'd like. And then the database. So I have the KS database right here. And then if you want to change the password, and I'm going to tell you why, because we're going to have to input that password into our YAML. Uh, of course, in production, we're going to want to pass that in via some type of secret, right? So we have our configurations here. Let me go ahead and pull up my GKE cluster. I'm going to click connect, I'll snag this here, go to VS code, open up my terminal and run this all right cool so now kubectl get nodes oop got to do the authentication here really quick actually you know what i've been having issues with this for whatever reason so you know what i'm going to do i'm actually going to go back to gke here i'm going to click connect oop, actually i'm going to go to the cloud shell here and you could do this as well if you don't want to do it in vs code all right and we can see here i do have the code i just i called this test but this is actually the staple set <laughs> take a look at that in a second but let's go ahead and connect to our cluster all right kubectl get nodes all right beautiful so now if I just do a quick cat on a test.yaml, we can see this is a stateful set and my SQL server. I'm gonna go to VS Code here really quick and show you that all in a second. And then cat storage.yaml persistent volume claim, all right? So if we go to VS Code, we're gonna see same exact thing here. So first we set up a service. Next, we set up our stateful set. And our stateful set using the latest container image for MySQL and these environment variables here. The root username, the password, again, if this was a production environment, you'd of course wanna put this in a secret. The database, which I showed you, the KDS test, and then the MySQL instance connection string, okay? Then for the persistent volume claim, pretty straightforward, 30 gigs, we're gonna use the storage class available in GCP. And just to confirm, MySQL PV claim, MySQL PV claim, beautiful. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna deploy the storage. All right, cool. kubectl, get PVC. All right, we can see it right here, and of course, it is pending. Next, kubectl, create, minus F, test.yaml, all right, boom, MySQL is deployed. So if we run kubectl, get pods, you can see that is creating. We'll do a quick watch here. 
takes a second or two for the connection to occur. So remember, we're going from Kubernetes to the database. All right, and 32 seconds in or so, give or take, we can now see that is running. If we run kubectl, get stateful set. You can see that right here as well. And then if we run kubectl, get pods, kubectl, describe pods, mysql, Right, we can see everything was pulled successfully. Scroll up here and we have our environment variables for MySQL. And that's how you can connect to an external database within Kubernetes. Thanks so much for watching.